There is a time that a calorie deficit will not work for fat loss. I know I do a lot of fitness content. I talk a lot about debunking BS with nutrition and training, whatever. And this is actually going to go into a bit of life design. Not all of you are going to like what you are about to hear. Many people know me as the person that says to people, oh, calorie deficit, or you just need to eat less. But for some people, that advice will just not simply work. And I'll explain right now. Not all of you, but a lot of you watching this don't like your job. And many of you have been brainwashed for years on end that that's supposed to be normal. I don't think it is. Now, I don't think everyone can love their job, but if you're someone that watches my videos on YouTube, I bet you're into self-development, I bet you're inquisitive, I bet you're someone that wants to up the ante on your quality of life. And a lot of you watching this as well are not being served by your relationship. I'm not a relationship guru, but relationships are supposed to serve both parties. It's a partnership. And if you're not getting anything out of a relationship, rather than it being a wind in the sails behind you propelling you forward, it's gonna be a headwind slowing you down. There's a concept called the sunk cost fallacy. Human beings, yourself included, remain invested in things, not always because it's a smart reason to remain invested, but so that your prior investment thus far doesn't go to waste. All of you watching this will know a friend who's in like a really shitty relationship. Maybe his missus is always on his case and he's going out with the boys and he's got to go home to keep his missus happy or the other way around. And you're always there. He said, mate, why are you still with her? Why are you still in this relationship? And he sits down and he goes, well, we've been together five years. Rather than making a decision on whether or not that relationship is good for him, he's using his previous investment of the five years he's put into the relationship as a reason to remain invested. He's succumbing to the sunk cost fallacy. All right, let's put this into a professional context. Your little cousin goes to university and you're like, hey mate, how's university? And he goes, oh mate, oh, I hate it. I've chosen the wrong course. I'm not enjoying it. I don't see the practical application to using this in the real world. It's just a bloody waste of time. And you go, okay, what are you going to do? And he says two more years what but you just said you're not i've already done one year so i might as well do the other two he's not making a decision off the degree being worth the money time or effort he's making the decision so that the last year doesn't go to waste another context you go to the cinema you sit down the film's rubbish rather than leaving because that'll make you feel like your ticket money's going to waste you sit there through the whole film same at home even if you didn't pay for the film and you watched it on netflix Get halfway through, you go, it's rubbish. You go, well, we've already watched the first half. We might as well finish it. You're making decisions on ensuring that previous investments don't go to waste. Someone that doesn't enjoy their job often will not leave. So the time they've already invested in that job doesn't go to waste. That clouds their vision more than the idea of doing a job they like. Millions, maybe even billions of people struggle with their weight. And let's face it, eating foods, especially tasty hedonic ones, makes us happy. Everyone seems to think they've got a problem with emotional eating. If you don't feel a cascade of emotions when you eat, there's something wrong with you. From an evolutionary standpoint, it makes sense that our brain gets very excited around food. So I believe a real issue here is a lot of people are working jobs they don't enjoy and they're in relationships that don't serve them. So they go to work, spend the whole day doing something that doesn't make them feel good at all. Then they come back to a relationship that's been numb and sexless and not pleasurable for years, but they're staying in the job to make sure the last 10 years don't go to waste and they're staying in the relationship to make sure the last four years didn't go to waste. If they're not deriving happiness from those things, of course they're gonna to turn to food and drink. So when you say to these people, oh mate, calorie deficit, oh consume less calories, mate, oh just push a feed-in window, whatever advice you give them, you're telling them to do less of the only things that can make these people happy. And it's not willpower that's holding them back. If you remove something that makes a human happy, there's only a certain period of time they can sustain that for before they break. So for a lot of these people, I don't blame them. That used to be my existence. I worked in a corporate job for years. I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's all right for you. You've got no kids, blah, blah, blah. I used to drink on my lunch breaks. I used to go have a couple of pints of cider before having to go back and hit sales calls all day. I would then make it through the week and then I'd go out and get smashed on a Saturday night with my rugby team. And probably that's where I'd seek all my pleasure for the week. I go, oh, well, I've been pent up in an office, not enjoying anything. I've been in this relationship that does my head in. Saturday, I'm going loose. And I used to get loose. And then Sunday, I wouldn't even get out of bed. And then I'd be half depressed about how smashed I got the night before. And I'd be half depressed about the fact that I'd have to wake up and start all over again on a Monday. If you're a victim to your life design, because you get to design how your life looks. I know that it often feels like you're powerless and everything else in your surroundings is controlling your life for you, but you're more in control than you think. If you're a victim to your own life design, just simply trying to reduce calories will almost never work for you. You need to address the precursor to these things and ensure that you are getting some sense of 
reward from your professional life and that you're getting something from your relationship. Because if your first thought and inkling behind why you're still invested in these things is to ensure that time, energy and effort previously spent doesn't go to waste, you are in them for the wrong reason. For a long time in my early career, I thought money was more important than the happiness I got from things. I thought getting a corporate job and working my way up the ladder is what would bring me success. I never enjoyed going to work. I was never really that productive. I never excelled in anything until my late twenties. I was probably 27, maybe even 28, before my parents had anything to truly be proud about that I've ever created. And the point in this video for a lot of you is to get out of this relationship that's not serving you. You kind of already know that, but you need me to sit here a bit like an older brother and go do it. Because if you want to find motivation to eat better and exercise more, being single is one of them. But from a professional aspect, so many of you watching this have no idea how productive you can be when you love your life. I took a substantial pay cut becoming a personal trainer. But for the first time in my life at 24, I wanted to get out of bed and actually do something that I'd enjoy. And little did I know that getting rid of rubbish relationships and taking the route that most of my friends thought was insane, becoming a personal trainer, meant I would love my existence. And when I loved my existence, eating better was easy. Training harder was easy. Focusing on my business was easier. Many of the things that I've accomplished in life, whether it's the silver play button, all the three best-selling books, boils down to the fact that I really enjoy my work and I really enjoy my relationships. If you're someone that struggles to stick to a diet or a training regime before looking at the diet and training regime, look at your relationships, look at your personal life. You gotta be ruthless with the passengers that you let come along your journey that you're gonna call life. And if I'm chatting rubbish and it was the worst decision, you can always go back to your old job. I could be wrong, but what if I'm right? I'll leave you to think about that. See you in a bit.